Good morning, welcome. Chapter 13, verse 5 in Genesis, in Bratius, we learned that Abraham, Abraham, and his wife Sarai, Sarah, who was at that time still called Sarai, along with Abraham's nephew Lot ascended back up from Egypt where they ran away to because of the famine in Israel and Canaan. And now they had returned. Let's just take a moment and talk about Lot. Who was Lot? Lot is Abraham's nephew. Abraham had several brothers, Nochor and Horon. Horon had a son whose name was Lot. So Lot is Abraham's brother's son, his nephew. Lot was so-so. He was not a wonderful guy. He was not a terrible guy. He was just a guy. Sometimes he was wonderful and sometimes he was terrible. As we look into the Medrash, and Rashi brings this down as well earlier, there was a secondary, another relationship between Avraham Avinu, between Abraham and Lot. And that was in addition to Lot being his nephew, he was also his brother-in-law. Because according to the Medrash, when the Torah enumerates Haran's sons earlier, Haran's children earlier, rather. One of the children of Haran is Yiska. Rashi brings down earlier that Yiska is another name for Sarah. So that Sarah was Haran's daughter, meaning that Sarah was Lot's sister. So Lot is a nephew and a brother-in-law. That's like I am my own grandpa type thing. <laughs> so now we read about the relationship between Avraham Avinu and Lot, which was a hot and cold relationship. Why was it a hot and cold relationship? Avraham, Abraham was a prophet. Abraham was a tzaddik. He was a super righteous guy. Abraham was a patriarch. Lot was just a regular guy. Abraham was interested in making mitzvahs. Lot was interested in making money. So he says now, Vigam Lilot, good morning, that Lot as well. Haholechas Avram, who accompanied Abraham on this journey, the wealth which Abraham acquired rubbed off on him as well. He also was privileged now to have many flocks and many herds of cattle and many tents, like stocks, bonds, and real estate. Rashi ha'helech es Avram. Rashi tells us mi goram shoyis aleizayis. Who caused him to have this wealth? Halichosiyim Avram. The fact that he associated with Abraham. So I guess you do business with a wealthy guy, you become wealthy. The problem was, as we're about to learn, that Abraham was an extremely ethical. God-fearing person, and specifically Avraham Avinu Abraham did not want to take anything that didn't belong to him, and Lot wanted to make a buck. So they were in the shepherding business. In the shepherding business, there's a lot of shortcuts you can take. Lot's shepherds always wanted to take shortcuts, and Abraham's shepherds were told not to. This led to strife. and That's what we're about to read now in 6. The land was not able to bear them to live together. This county ain't big enough for the two of us. Because their wealth was massive. And they had problems dwelling together. In Los Angeles we say we should do the Rodney King thing. Why can't we all just get along? 
you remember that? They couldn't just get along. They were always battling, Abraham shepherds and Lot shepherds. Rashi, the simple meaning is there wasn't enough feed, enough pasture for all of their cattle. This would be like a shortened, abbreviated version. And one might have to add between the lines that there wasn't enough pasture. That's why it's masculine gender. Anyhow, we read in 7 that this background developed into there was a battle, a fight, strife, disagreement. Bain between Reye Mikne Abram, the shepherds shepherding the sheep of Abraham, Ovain and between Reye, the shepherds who were shepherding Mikne Leit, the cattle, the sheep of Lot, they battled. There was bad stuff going on between them. And here, the Torah tells us, and Rashi explains why the Torah tells us this. And the, in that area, two of the Canaanite nations were living at that time, Canaan and Prizi. There were seven Canaanite nations. These are two of them. They inhabited the land at that time. Rashi gives us now background. Seven, by Hiriv, there was strife. Why was there strife? Because the shepherds of Lot were bad guys. They never hesitated, causing their cattle to graze in other people's fields. It didn't bother them at all. They didn't lose any sleep over it. But Abraham's shepherds, who were under orders to strictly adhere to his rules, they would rebuke Lot's shepherds. What was Lot's shepherd's defense? The Haim Amrim, Lot's shepherds, would say, Hey, chill. This land was given to Abraham. So it's our land. I'm the nephew. God gave it to Abraham. Who cares who lives there now? What, do, what does Lot have to do with Abraham? Below ain't yours, because Abraham has no, no heir. He has no children. Velate Yorshe. So our boss, he's the nephew. The Ainze Gozel. So you're accusing us of stealing? It's not stealing. The land belongs to us. God gave Abraham the land. What's the answer? Are they right? The answer is no, they're wrong. God promised in the future. God promised Abraham that he would in the future deliver this land to his descendants. But right now, and that's the meaning of why the second half of the verse comes, the the verse tells us that at that time, that the Canaanite nations of Canaan and Prizi were dwelling in the land. They were inhabiting the land. And Abraham did not take possession yet. So in Abraham's perspective, from Abraham's perspective, the shepherds of Lot were stealing. From the shepherds of Lot's perspective, which they obviously got from their boss, hey, sooner or later it's going to belong to us, so what's the big deal? They, they tell a cute story, it's a, a shtetl story, so you have to have a shtetl sense of humor. That there was this uh, shlamazel, this, this guy who was always in trouble, financially, and, and, and one day he comes to the charity fund in the city. He says, please, my wife died, and I need 200 rubles to bury her. They said, oh, we're so sorry. Here's the money. Anyway, a couple hours later, they come, and they say, excuse me. We just saw your wife. She was out shopping. <laughs> what are you talking about? She didn't die. He said, hey, sooner or later, she's going to die. She'll be yours. Be a little patient. I mean, what's the difference? Or like I, I, I told on the high holidays that this, this guy comes to work, and his boss says to him, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. The answer to that question will determine whether you continue to have your job or not. Do you believe in life after death? He says, do I believe in life after death? He says, yes, that's the question. 
He says, yes, I believe I do. He says, this is good. Because remember on Friday when you took off to go to your grandmother's funeral, she stopped in to see you. <laughs> okay. So now we come to the Rodney King thing. Verse 8. So Abraham said to Lot, why can't we all just get along? I'll know, Sahimariba, please let there not be division, let there not be strife. Beni between me, Ovenecha, and between you, Oven Reyai, and between my shepherds, Oven Reyecha, and your shepherds. Ki Anoshim Achim Anochnu. Are we not kinfolk? We are brothers. It's not nice, Ashanda, for the neighbors that we should fight. Anoshim Achim, Achim doesn't literally mean brothers, but it means craven relatives. The Medrash Agoda says, Daimin Beklaster Ponim, that Lot had very much one face with Abraham. Lot would walk down the street, those who wouldn't know them well would think it's Abraham. So when they caught Lot where he didn't belong, they thought that Abraham was there. So Abraham says, you know, we gotta, we gotta change neighborhoods. I mean, this is not a good thing. I don't even want to shop in your Ralphs. Actually, Abraham shopped in Gelson's. Verse 9. Is not the entire land open before us? He poured no me a lie. My suggestion is, why don't you separate from me? If you'll take the left, I'll go to the right. And if you will take the right, I'll go to the left. Morning. Verse 9, im hasmel ve'emina, Rashi, bechel asher teshe, wherever you will go, don't worry, le'esrachik mimcha, I won't be that far away from you. You'll still be able to text me in case you run into trouble. The am made lecho, and I will be there for you, le'mogain as a shield, le'ezer, and as a helper. I'm going to be your personal 911. The save double Hutzuchle. The fact of the matter is that later it, it turned out that he needed him. Shanam, as it says, that in the great world war of the four kings against the five kings, which God willing we will learn manana tomorrow, by Yishma Avram, Kinishba it says that ultimately Avram got the message that Lot was kidnapped. So he went to war. So he was there to bail out his nephew. He says, don't worry, I just want to separate, but I'll be there, not far away, always be there to come to your aid. Ve'emina grammatically means, says Rashi, I'm in a smat atzmi, I'll move myself to the right. Kimei ve'asmi, ila asmi let's atzmi. Ve'asmi means I'll direct myself to the left. So you choose, you go right, I go left, you go left, I go right. Perhaps you, should, you would argue that it should be vocalized differently. That's the way it's vocalized. There's another interpretation that Abraham wanted to go to the right. He said, If you'll take the left, I'll go to the right. If you'll choose the right, I'll force you to choose the left. I will make you choose the left. It's another interpretation. Okay. Verse 10. Jack. Ba'isa lot es enov. So lot, having to make this decision of to choose a new frontier. Lot lifted up as ain of his eyes. Mayar and he saw is kol kikar hayardain all of the fruited plains. No, just kidding. The plains of the Jordan. Kihula mashka, that it was all a moist, fertile area. We're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, which was the garden of God. Before the destruction. This was the most fertile area in Israel. 
In the Russian Yiddish Hebrew vernacular, mashke means alcohol. He says, Kichula mashke, he saw that there was always a place to drink. There was a, uh, always a bar to go into. But that's just a joke. Lifnei shachis Hashem, this was well before God destroyed Es Sodom, Es Amorah, Sodom and Gomorrah. The area of the Jordan Valley where Sodom and Gomorrah were was at that time Kigan Hashem, like the Garden of God. What's the Garden of God? The Garden of Eden. What was the Garden of Eden known for? It's wonderful trees. Ke'eretz Mitzrayim, like the land of Egypt. What was the land of Egypt known for? It's fertile earth. It's fertile soil to produce tremendous abundance. Boach Tzor, as you came into Tzor, which was one of the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, this was the most fertile area. Kichula Mashke, Eretz Nachlemoyim, it's a land of streams of water. There was tremendous water there, water supply. Lefnei Shachas Hashem Esedom Vesamora, Hoya Oisa Misha, that plain was, later, after God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, it was a chemical wasteland. But before that, it was Kigan Hashem, Le'ilones, for trees. Because again, the Garden of Eden was known for its wonderful trees. Keretz Mitzrayim, Lezeroyim, for vegetation. Boach Otzor, Atzor. That's the simple meaning. Why did Lot choose the Jordan Valley? Why did Lot choose Sodom and Gomorrah? Because it was a fertile land. But the Medrash says no. He chose it for its decadent lifestyle. That was the Vegas of that time. Not that there's anything wrong with Vegas. There's five Chabad houses there today. <laughs> but I mean in, in Bugsy Siegel's time. Dershim Lignai, they interpret it in a negative way, al shahoyu Zima, because they were carried away by lewd activity. So chose that neighborhood because he figured that this was a place where he can really live it up and enjoy himself and get away from the strict lifestyle imposed upon him and his people by Abraham and his people. So now we read in 11, Vayiv char leilet, es kol kikar ayarden, good morning, that Lot chose the entire plain of Jordan, Vayiv salot mikedem, and Lot journeyed east, Vayiv pordu, and they separated ish me'al ochiv, one from another. Kikar, says Rashi 11, mishar kitar gumay, a plain. He journeyed away from Abraham. And he went away to the west of Abraham. So Mikedem means from east. From east to west. The Medr says that Kedem also refers to the ancient one that Lot moved away from God. He he removed himself. From the originator of the world, from the creator of the world. So Lot says, I had enough of this religious stuff. Omar, he said, I don't want, I don't desire, I don't need Abraham, I don't need his God. Just let me be and let me live it up. Eat, drink, and be merry. So this was his intent when he removed himself from Abraham. Okay, there is a Balaturim here where the Balaturim says that we look at the words Vayipordu and then we have Ish, Me'al, Ochiv, and then we have Avram. Look at the four words, Ish, Me'al, Ochiv, followed by Avram. Look at the last letter of those four words, 11, 12, makes up the word Shalom. That sometimes in order to make peace, you need to separate they separated for peace. And later also, because of this, there was peace between their descendants, as God told the Jewish people, al totsar es Moab, do not harass Moab, the descendants of Lot, but always maintain a semblance of peace. Twelve, 
Avroham Yosha bi Eretz Canaan. So how did the separation pan out? Abraham, Avraham dwelled in what was the land of Canaan proper. Velon Lot Yosha and Lot dwelled bi Oriakikar in the cities of the plain. The plains, meaning later what was to be the devastation of Sodom and Gomorrah. By Yel Hatzdeim, and Lot was so wealthy that his tents spread up until Sodom proper, up until the city limits of Sodom. By Yehal Noto Eholim, he pitched his tents, Lereyav, for his shepherds, Ulimikneo and his cattle, at Sodom, going all the way to Sodom. So Lot had substantial wealth. Now, this is the first time we read about Sodom and the people of Sodom and the decadence of Sodom. Sodom was the capital of self-centeredness, of selfishness, of cruelty, of sadism, of decadence. Oh, any, any word you can think of, Sodom was its capital if it had to do with negativity. The people were only interested in amassing more wealth and more wealth and having a good time and never permitting anyone to come in. They had a very strict immigration policy. You couldn't come in unless you were very, very wealthy. And if, God forbid, a visitor would come to Sodom, they had a big sign. It said, uh, trespassers will be violated. <laughs> Verse 13, the Anshe Sodom, the people of Sodom, Royim Bechatoim Lashem Be'ed, were evil and sinful to God. Ma'od, ma'od means mucho. I mean, they were so evil and so sinful. They were actually cruel. The Anche Sodom Royim. So one would think that if the people of Sodom were so evil and it wasn't a secret, then Lot wouldn't go there. On the contrary, Lot said, I like it. The Afa became nevertheless, Lot didn't hesitate for a moment to dwell with them. But Abbe Seinu Lamdu Mikan, our rabbis learned from here, Vashem Rashoim Yirkov, the meaning of the verse in, in Mishlei and Proverbs, and the name of the wicked shall rot, that the reputation is a rotting reputation. Ro'im Bigufam, bodily, Vachatoim Bemamainim, financially, Lashem Ba'od, very much exceedingly to Hashem. Why? It's not that this was a crime of passion. This was a premeditated crime. Yedim ribeinam, they recognized their master, they knew Hashem, and they said, we will rebel against God, we don't care, our financial strength is mightier than God. And the one thing we have to make sure is that no schleppers and no poor people come and take our wealth away. And they actually legislated horrible laws. The Medrashim are filled with horrendous tales. If a guest would come into Sodom and he would ask for a night's lodging, they would put him up in the lodge, in the communal lodge. If he was a tall guy, they would put him on a short bed and say that it is the law of Sodom that you have to fit the bed. So they would amputate his legs. Literally, and he would bleed to death. And that can ruin your whole day. If he was a short guy, they would put him on a big bed and stretch him to death. And they had no problem killing people, all in the name of a strong economy. Ultimately, as we will learn, the sin that broke, so to speak, the camel's back, is there was a guest that came to town and there was a young lady who thought no one saw her as she brought the guest into her home and fed him and gave him a night's lodging, but she was in fact spotted. And they took her and stripped her naked and saturated her body, smeared her body with honey and hung her outside and she was stung to death. And, and this is everyday stuff in Sodom. The most important criteria was the economy must be strong. Verse 14, later we're going to go into the story of the destruction of Sodom. 
Now you got to put your pause button on. After the Torah told us, tells us in 13 that the people of Sodom were wicked. So now we say, Hashem Amar al Avram, and Hashem said to Avram, Achre he parted late me after Lot separated from Avraham. So Lot's negativity was removed from Abraham. God could reveal himself more comfortably to Abraham. What does Hashem tell Avraham? Sonoinecha, lift up your eyes, Ure A. And look, have a look see. Minamokim from the place Asherashom where you stand, look Tsafaino to the north, Vanegba to the south, Vakedma to the east, the Yomo and to the west. Good morning. And it's interesting that the order here is north, south, east, west. The order by Yaakov is east, west, north, south. That the primary merit of Abraham were the sacrifices which he brought, and the place of by and large, on the altar where the blood was sprinkled or where the offers, offerings were slaughtered was tzafein on the north side of the altar. So north alludes to the altar and to sacrifices. Whereas yoma refers to the yam, the splitting of the sea, which we attribute to Yaakov. That's what the Balaturim says. Rashi 14, Achre he parted late, Kozman shod Oshayimah, as long as this wicked man, Lot, who relative to Abraham was wicked, the word of God departed from him. Here we have an interesting lesson. To quote the Jewish comedian, uh, comedians, Jigen and Schumacher, an interesting lesson in Jewish relativity, that relative to Abraham, Lot was wicked. Relative to Sodom, Lot was a tzaddik. He says that, uh, what's the idea of relativity? He says, I understand Einstein's theory of relativity. What's Einstein's theory of relativity, says the Jewish comedian? If you have two hairs on your head, it's very little. If you have two hairs in your soup, it's too much. <laughs> That's the Jewish theory of relativity. He says, Einstein was such a smart guy. I mean, it's, it's, it's elementary, Watson. 15, because the entire land that you see, says Hashem to Abraham, I will give it to you, and to your ninos, to your seed, to your children, forever. And, and by the way, what we're reading now is 3,300 plus years old. That's when it was written, and it was said much earlier than that. And it still has relevance today. Israel was given to the Jewish people. We read about it every day in the LA Times and in every other newspaper in the world. The debate, it's Israel was given by God to the Jewish people. No if, ands, and buts about it. 16, Visamti es zaracha, and God says to Abraham, I will make your children, your offspring, Ka'afar ha'oretz, like the dust of the earth. Asher that imyu chalish limnes. If anyone can number esafar ha'oretz, the dust of the earth, gam zaracha yimona will be able to number your children. Your children will be impossible to number. 16, asher imyu chalish, kishem shi'ef shela offer limon, is just as you can't count Dust, earth, grains of sand, kach, so also, zarach, you're not going to be able to count your seed. Now, it's interesting because this suggests that the Jewish people are as populous as the Chinese. The fact is they're not. Jewish people, it says, are the, the smallest. Ki atem amat mikola amim. You are the tiniest of all nations. Yet it suggests over here that we are the largest. What does it mean? One of the interpretations here is, is that the Jewish people are the only people that have lasted and will last eternally. So that throughout the ages, the amount and number of Jews are, are almost infinite because all other nations have come and gone. Another interpretation is the contributions of the Jew relative to the population are innumerable. 
Wherever you go in the world, you find the Jew does this, and the Jew does this, and the Jew does this, and the Jew does this. So that the contribution of the Jew to every country and to every region and to every place where they dwelled is disproportionate to the population. Look at the Nobel Prize winners. Did you know that Obama was Jewish? <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Okay. Got to be careful. Verse 16, 17. Kum yisalech ba'oretz. Arise and walk through the land. Li'orko l'rochbo. To its length and breadth. Again, God is speaking to Abraham and saying, Arise and walk through the land to its length and breadth. Ki l'choat nena. I'm going to be giving you all of this, this entire land is going to be your land. 18, that's the promise, the first promise of Abraham, of God to Abraham about Israel. By Yehal Avram, in the meantime, in the meantime, Abraham pitched his tents, or, or actually removed his tents, uprooted his tents, by Yahweh, and he moved, he came by Yeshem, and he settled in, Be'elone Mamre. He changed residence as he went to the Plains of Mamre, Asher Bechevron, that are around Hebron, that was ultimately the site of the cave of Machpelah where Sarah was buried. By even Shamiz Beach Lashem, and he built an altar for Hashem. Mamre Shem Odom, Mamre is the name of a man. And tomorrow, in tomorrow's class, we're going to, God willing, learn about the war, the Great World War. And then we go back to the narrative of Abraham and Isaac and uh, the covenant and all of that stuff. Okay, end of Chumash portion.